Hello and welcome to the final edition of Legislative Digest, a series of programs with local area legislators who've been trying to, their best to keep you informed about progress throughout the legislative session. It's over. They're here to tell us all about what happened. Um, certainly there have been some triumphs that we'll address, maybe some disappointments, I don't know. But we'll sort of make the rounds. I want to welcome Marianne Dunwell, Representative Marianne Dunwell, back to the table. Senator Terry Gauthier. Did I get that right this time? Pretty close. Pretty close. Gauthier. Gauthier. <laughs> um, welcome back. Thank you. Kim Abbott, Representative. Hey. Julie Dooling, Representative. And Senator Jill Kohenauer. So thanks to all of you for making time uh, in this aftermath season following the close of the legislative session. So first off, I just want to ask all of you, each of you, how does it feel right now to be done with a very important, they're always a very important legislative session. So let, let's start with you, Marianne. How do you feel? How did I draw this short straw? <laughs> actually, I feel like I'm just uh, in recovery, actually. it's it's. Three and a half months of very intensive, um, nonstop, uh, burning the candle at both ends, public policy making, and throwing in some sausage um, at, towards the end. It's it's very um, it's it's very intense, and so I, I think. I, I can't speak for everybody else, but I took a couple of days just to decompress and process what did we do? And, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the day, together, collectively, working across the aisle, we got a lot done for Montanans. Well, we're going to speak to all the content of your mm -hmm. accomplishments. You know, I, I just was imagining, you know, those moving escalators in the airports where you get on and that speeds your progress through those long aisleways, and then you come to the end and it's not moving anymore. That's my sense is that when you, you've been going so fast and so furious and all of a sudden you're just walking, you know, on plain ground. That may be an understatement, probably so. Speed up those walkways about a hundred times and <laughs> yeah. that's about how fast okay. we go. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, pretty, pretty much there. Okay, so. Senator, what, what are you feeling? We talked earlier a little bit about the health impairment that comes with a session. Tell us about that. Well, um, my personal experience is I'm a very active individual, and I try to hike every day. And, and the session takes away everything that really means dear to your heart. As far as your personal life, is just it kind of goes away. It gets consumed. The capital takes your whole life away from you. And your dog so, suffers. Oh, my dog <laughs> suffers. His poor owner suffers. Uh, so, you know, your normal daily routine. What I really look forward to at the end of the session is getting my life back. Uh, I don't mind. I, I like to work at the Capitol, but the reality is I really like the routine I'm back at now, you yeah. know, doing these trails. But the session, I think, was very productive. I think we worked, again, bipartisan on a lot of things. I'm part of the Solutions Caucus, which is the part of the caucus that we, we feel that uh, we need to get things done and work with both sides of the aisle. We worked on a lot of uh, agenda items. I think we all agree that worked out real well for Montanans, and that's, if it was good for Montana, I was supporting it. And, you know, it's really kind of funny. I mean, I worked very hard, just like we said, the morning, you know, the burn the candle on both ends. I did all that, too. And then all of a sudden, right there at the last day, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Senator Sessa says, I call a sunny die. <laughs> and I, I mean, just like stunned me. All of a sudden, we, and we passed it. It was just like that. It was over. How can that be? And we just looked at each other like, <laughs> is it really over? And then you just pack your stuff up and go home. So it, that's where I'm at right yeah. now. And then just trying to readjust and... There's lots of little things like this. We're still finishing up, wrapping up the session. But as a, I'd give our session a good, solid B plus. I think we did real well. That's pretty high grade. Yeah. Representative Abbott, how do you feel? Uh, similar. I mean, I think uh, the thing about the legislative session is it's an intense, you know, four-ish months with a different pace probably than the most of us have in our, you know, normal nine to five life. Uh, so just getting back into normal routine and, you know, getting back in with family and friends um, feels great and it feels like a relief. But, you know, like Terry said, I, I really enjoy the work while I'm there. And I think that, um, you know, for our caucus, everything that we pass collectively has to be bipartisan since right. we're in the minority. And I feel like I generally agree that we had a really successful 
session in terms of bipartisan policies um, that made it to the governor's desk and, and either have or will get his signature that will really improve people's lives and improve our economy and you know set us up for even better stuff next session, I mm -hmm. hope. So. Yeah. Well, thanks for mentioning improving people's lives because I think a lot of us normal citizens who aren't all that much engaged forget that that's really what it comes down yeah. to. You know, there's all this fury and controversy, but in the end, it's about that. Sure. Mm -hmm. So it's a, great to be reminded. Julie, how do you feel? Um, You're I, a, from the majority party <laughs> Yeah, and, as a senator. And um, like Senator Garthier said, I, I think we, we had a, we carried a lot of good policies. Um, being part of the Solutions, Solutions Caucus, um, we that was our goal. We there's a lot of those problems have been been around for many many sessions, and it was time to get them taken care of. And it was it was good to be I think part of that solution and part of that process. Um, the session started out really really fast it slowed a little bit but then it picked up again and um i just i really enjoyed the pace of how every moment of every day is filled with something it's there's not a lot of lulls or you know breathing mm -hmm. time you just you're constantly moving from one thing to another and it's it's just a great fast moving pace and i really enjoyed it yeah in my recollection there in past sessions conference committees there were more of them and they would Everyone was held in suspense for days at, at some times, you know, yeah. waiting, waiting, waiting for a small group of people to make these decisions. It did strike me this time that it's more smooth, more participatory. I may be exaggerating that, but it did feel from the outside different from the past. From the outside. From the outside, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I would say that this session was odd. I think it was odd from the very beginning. Um, and I were, would talk to people about, isn't this strange? This is an odd session. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and people would say, yeah, it, that they were feeling the same thing that I was all the way through the session, including down to the last signy die thing, because I did the same thing. I went, oh. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> it so cool. And it passed. And it was like, oh my gosh, we are done. What do I do? <laughs> that last day. And then you're packing your things up, but it's still just a surreal kind of a situation because you start out and you're going through and those last few days i'm usually not on any of the conference committees but i ended up on three of them uh -huh. two of them on my bills to to fix things um because the house messed them up um, <laughs> and one of them i accidentally looked like someone else so they accidentally put me on it but i knew enough about the subject to be able to be helpful and do what we needed to do to get things done so it was so the last few days were just as fast paced for me because a lot of times during the session and especially towards the end, it is small groups of people and appropriations people that are finishing things up and you really aren't involved. The tax committee, we're done like a week before, yeah. you know, so our mornings are free, but that's when I ended up having, you know, the day before the last day of the session, I was in three conference committees in the morning, had a had an actual committee meeting at 11. Um, after the floor, we had to go back into another conference committee. I, I, my whole day was filled. Yeah. So to get to the next day and have that last signy die oddness that happened, it, it was odd. just strange. So the <laughs> whole session for me was very strange because I've this is my seventh session because I did all my house time and then moved to the Senate. And so as my seventh session, it's you know you'd think it'd be you'd be in the groove and know what you're doing, but this was an odd session. It huh. just really was for pacing me. Pacing for sure. Yeah, just yeah. the pacing was odd and. Mm -hmm. The way we talked to each other and the way things got done was different than mm -hmm. any session I've been involved in. Mm -hmm. So well, I hope in a good way, I think. Yeah, I hope it's I fair to say, you know, again, from the outside looking in, it was oddly positive yes. Yes. in the end. Yes. So let's now address some of the, you know, the triumphs that all of you contributed to, I can say. Um, and let's go in reverse order. So, Rep Senator, what, what, what's like, what are you most proud of having accomplished? You know, I know it's never on your own, but in concert with others what's what's the main thing that you'd like to make sure people understand well terry's got two of mine so i'm going to leave him for him okay. to talk about and it's fun that you can share yes, you can share in the being glory on the right yeah. committees to help terry's stuff and he and i worked really closely on the museum build so I'll, but i'll let him kind of talk about that one because i'm i'm really proud 
of the work we did on that mm -hmm. um, and what it's going to do for the state of Montana. That's super important. Um, but I think um, probably my proudest moment in the session really was getting a couple of bills passed on protecting wildlife information in the state of Montana. I think um, I had a bill early on in the session that would have essentially um, not allowed for the monetizing of GPS location information on game animals. And mm -hmm. that one ended up dying over in the House uh, partway through the session. Uh, but I had another bill that I, because in doing that first bill, I figured out that the information that um, Fish, Wildlife, and Parks holds, the biological information, the GPS, collar location of dens of grizzly bears and um, game animals and, you know, lynx and bear and, you know, mm -hmm. all of that stuff that they get that helps them to try to manage the animals in the state of Montana is not protected. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I found out. And so we tried, I tried an initial bill that didn't pass um, through the committee, and then I tried a second bill um, that ended up getting a heavily amended down to essentially that if you do get the information from the Fish, Wildlife, and Parks, if you have that information, you can't use it to harm, harass, or kill the animals. And if you do, then there's a criminal penalty to that, and you could actually use your ability, lose your ability to hunt in the state of Montana. So that passed, and basically in concert with, secondarily, um, I put a study resolution in that will be done by EQC, um, Environmental Quality Council, during the interim, because that's who has oversight of Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. And it will include, essentially, what in the, in the state of Montana, what do we think are, um, is information that needs to be protected. Um, do, sh you know, of course we have endangered animals, um, sage grouse. Um, we put a lot of money into trying to keep them from being listed. Yeah. So we don't, you know, the lax, um, the, where are they located? Um, where are grizzly bear dens? Um, so that you can't go and, and actually hunt those animals. I think it's going to be imperative for us t as Montanans to decide what is fair chase <laughs> in the state, and that's why we should protect, protect this information, uh, because we are a fair chase state. We don't allow people to come in and just buy a trophy animal like some other states do. Yeah. We just That's not the way it is. And so we work hard for the animals that we kill for meat here in the state of Montana, and um, we're not much for trophy hunting. I mean, it's good when you get an animal that's a trophy, but it's really all about us getting out in nature, participating in our outdoor heritage. And if you get an animal and are able to put that in the refrigerator, it's amazing. Um, yeah. And that's and good for the state of Montana to manage those animals. And so to protect that information and say that there's a level of information that's appropriate for the public to have, and then to say this other information is not appropriate. Um, and the issue that came up is, you know, we have a right to know, really good right to know, um, laws in the state of Montana. And so what does that mean to us then if we need to protect certain kinds of information? So I hope that's something that can be dealt with during the interim. And I, I feel like it's something that the state of Montana is on the cusp of taking care of um, that maybe other states haven't done as well as we could do for, yeah. for our citizens and for our heritage. Yeah, it's very interesting that the information economy meets up with mm -hmm. this natural heritage that we have. You know, and it's would, really about the Who technology. saw that coming? I, yeah. This is all surprising yes. to me. It sounds great. And having been recently in foreign countries, I got to tell you, Montana is, is a special, special place. We all know this, yes. but it's special on the globe for the preservation of wildness and people's interaction with it. You and know, the technology differences that have come up over the years really requires us as legislators to take a, take a hand. We need to basically look at it and make sure that the technology matches our values here in the state of Montana. Yeah. Well, that's a signal accomplishment, no doubt. Let's move on to the next one. Representative Dooling. Okay. So, um, as we discussed before, I had the Deputy Mason Moore Highway Memorial Marker. And so that was, for a first time legislator, that was a pretty big deal. It's um, a pretty big deal to Broadwater County as well. And next week we'll be having the memorial and um, at the, the mile marker where he was killed. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go on to the park and have a little memorial celebration ceremony because he actually, his birthday, I believe, was two days before his date of death. So they're going to celebrate his life that day. Um, 
So that, that was my big one, um, one of my big ones. Again, I, the state employee pay plan, the raise, the increase in meal per diem and lodging, that was a pretty good one. Um, and then right now, my, my last bill is awaiting the governor's signature. Hopefully he signs it. Um, and it's for retail shoplifting um, when people steal merchandise out, emergency, out an emergency exit to a getaway car. Right now, if they get caught, it's a $500 ticket. And you know they have to appear in court. Well, chances of them actually appearing in court are pretty slim. Yeah. So it sets it up as a separate um, law that they're that they're breaking, and then um, kind of it's a they're able to stack those those um, those crimes to to build a felony crime on that. Um, and then the other part of that is a adding a one day jail time back in for disorderly conduct when absolutely necessary. So do you anticipate, what would be the reason that you we would suspect the governor mm -hmm. might not sign it? Are you confident that he's going to? It's um, trying I, to imagine, okay, what would be the cause to say no to that? Well, I, I've heard that he's not going to sign it. He's going to veto it. Um, and I think it's it's gone back and forth between the one day in jail because last session, House Bill 133 took out jail time on a lot of um, misdemeanor crimes. Hmm. And so this is just adding that back in just for this one extenuating circumstances to, you know, prevent possible felonies actually happening later on down the road or, you know, that evening or whatever. Um, and then I've heard that he didn't like the retail association, the shoplifting, because um, there wasn't enough evidence of that. So the Montana Retailers yeah. Association has gotten together and provided some evidence. And hopefully there's enough evidence on both sides to, to back up the bill. And it's, it's, it's confident on its own and he'll sign it. But yeah. we're just Well, it's one of those <laughs> bills that, you know, has an important purpose and a, and a big story behind it. But it's not one that rises to the surface for most of us. It's like, oh, yeah. never thought about that, you know, as a particular... And, instance of, of, of criminal behavior but it sounds like for a freshman legislator you've done a marvelous job so congratulations for for everything thanks really representative abbott what's yeah. your what's your crowning what's your crown you're wearing today oh um <laughs> well i spent the most of my session working on medicaid expansion um it's not a bill i carried um first i i worked with representative Cafaro on her bill and then once it was clear that we needed to be negotiating a policy um, that would maintain health coverage for you know 96,000 um, people, that is what I spent most of my time on um, in, until it until it cleared the house anyway. Um, so working with Representative Buttrey um, and Representative Moore, Representative Cafaro, um, Casey Schreiner, who was our leader, sort of just trying and a lot of help from policy experts. Um, you know, I, I'm pretty proud of the fact that people with really different ideology but a shared goal of keeping people um, mm -hmm. covered um, and making sure that we were maintaining a program that was like really successful um, with some changes. And every everyone here voted for it, right? Did you? Oh. Uh, <laughs> almost. Uh, almost. Almost. Uh, almost everyone. Um, but uh, but that was that took up um, honestly most of the at least the first two and a half, three months of, of the session. Mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, there are a lot of people that have a lot to be proud of in making sure that we got a bipartisan compromise that could get 51, 26, and one, which is the whole the whole deal, right? You have to get it you through the house. You 51 and one. <laughs> True. Depends on, on who's it talking, starts. right? Depends on where it starts. Um, there, every one of those votes is important, as everyone here knows, you know, um, and as we saw in the Senate, because it got hung up a little bit um, in the Senate side, and it looked like 26 was going to be real hard to get. Um, it was and, scary. Yeah, and you guys ended I knew up getting there. it through. The votes and, were there. It was just their whole Yeah, it was just, yeah, so, you know, that was, um, I didn't carry, I carried a few just small agency bills through, but sort of cleared cleared my time for, for working on that for the caucus. Well, on Medicaid expansion, is there anything specific to the bill that actually passed that you want to remind people about, about? For example, I mean, yes, it's expanded. People stay on. More people will get on, probably. Is there a sunset on it, or are there the, those conditions that yeah. were set? A couple of the particulars would be interesting just to yeah, get Yeah, so out. There, are, there are a couple things that I think are, are significantly different. Um, so there is a, there are a couple contingent sunsets on, you know, if, 
that have to do with whether um, work requirements are ruled to be um, legal or, or not legal. Um, so, so one way or another, we'll be revisiting the program. Um, we'll likely be re revisiting the program in six years. Um, the other thing that is significantly different is there there is a work requirement. Um, that was the crux of the compromise. Democrats have a strong position against work requirements. Um, Republicans that were interested in continuing Medicaid expansion were demanding a work requirement, so we had to figure out one that would yeah. work to get those votes. Um, and I think we did it. I think the exemptions are generous and they're broad, and there's a lot of supports for folks um, that will be required to um, meet the work requirement. And the folks that'll be required to work the required to meet the work requirement, it'll be a small group of people, and it's a group of people that um, I think will get a lot of work support that will actually set them up for success, hopefully. Yeah. And the other key part that I think people should really understand is we think this will work. We think that um, that it won't be sort of kicking a bunch of people off of their health care. We think that it'll be setting them up for success, and um, if we're wrong, there's an audit function. So if a certain percentage of people are, are being suspended, um, uh, from their coverage, what we'll go in and, and do is have a third party subject matter expert take a look and make sure that they're being rightfully suspended. And if they're being rightfully suspended, okay. Yeah. Um, but if they're not, if it's an error, we're gonna go back and fix it um, uh, the next time the legislature meets. So it's a, good, it's a good component, I think, that made Democrats feel like we can vote for this. You know, because we know that if it doesn't work, there's this fail safe. And it made Republicans feel like, okay, you know, like if we're actually kicking people off for the wrong reason, we should know that. You know, like we should be accountable and come back and take a look. Yeah. So it's a really important component, I think, of the bill. Yeah, and I think for the general public, you know, Medicaid expansion was the, the big ticket item for the session. And you're, you're sort of um, articulating how difficult, but how important these concessions Sure. among the parties are in the end and yeah. it, you know it sounds complicated but um and i should mention that people didn't read the newspaper today we're meeting on may 7th there's a full page ad you know yeah. thanking those of you who supported the bill for for your service and um i'm sure a lot of people saw that and that doesn't happen very often no, it doesn't. even in the capital yeah. city you know yeah. that, that's an extraordinary and I expression of of respect yeah and, I think, yeah, and I think that the, the thing that was extraordinary about this particular compromise was it was it was really difficult be, because the ideology was so different, but everyone wanted it to work. And so that was sort of the driver that like kept people at the table, you know, like over a sort of a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And so you just have a lot of respect for people that have such strong differences of opinion, but like Stay. want so badly. They're not going to walk away from it. Work, yeah. Right. And it's just, it was a cool, um, it was a very frustrating and stressful experience to have, but also it was a very cool experience at the end, like once we got there to to see all of that work. Um, and, I, and, you know, as we see implementation happen, it's going to be, I think, an exciting time too to watch the new program go into effect. Yeah, so this is modeling for the country right now, what we're talking about, uh, yeah, and, so. and state legislatures in and general. And keeping people alive and oh, that too. economy <laughs> thriving. There, there is the substance of it all. So, Senator Gauthier. Well, um, I had two bills that were working at the same time that kept me hopping all over the place. But Senate Bill 24 was my trails bill, and that's the one that I started work on prior to the session. Um, we started with that idea in a coffee shop and how did we figure out how we can fund the parks and get them money because, you know, there's $23 million behind and backlogged and maintenance for all the parks. So These are state parks. These are state parks, right. And, uh, and I grew up in parks. I use it as my testimony. I, I, I can't come from a wealthy family. I came from a working parents that had six kids and, you know, their goal is just to try to keep us fed and, and close, you know. Um, so when we did go... And out of the house... <laughs> and out of the house, yeah. The he didn't know where I, I was all over the place. So. so the trails were out of the house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but for a family who didn't have a lot of money, other than that, we had enough money to put, you know, fill the truck up and go go hit the campgrounds. So I was a big user. I thought I was living the American dream back in the day when I was like seven, eight years old in the park. So yeah. to me, now looking back at the parks today, now when I have grandchildren and all that kind of stuff, um, I, I just thought it was the right thing to do to make sure we keep taking care of our parks because that's becoming our almost our number one revenue stream for the state of Montana is through recreation and tourism. So making our parks better and making more people come is a great idea. So it was no brainer to me. But 
as we all know, as legislators, passing a bill that has anything to do with funding is not as easy as it sounds. <laughs> so navigating the minefields and doing all the things and the help from both sides of the House, thank you over in the House, and the Senate side, we all pulled together and got that vote done. So I'm very pleased that so we raised the fee from $6 for the state parks, and it's now $9, which is, as an option to y'all, if you do pay it, you have free access to all the parks, state parks. Uh -huh. But if you don't want to be in it, you can still opt out. You don't have to pay the $9 if you don't want to. But 77% of the people currently with the $6 fee does opt in. Yeah. Yeah. And I opt in. So the other one, uh, the museum bill, was a uh, kind of a mid-session shift gears that we kind of swapped. Me and Jill came to, uh, uh, you know, we worked together and, and decided, because I want to do what's best for Bruce Wittenberg and the, the, the museum, because I've been doing everything I could to help them. And it just so happens I was the vehicle then to being the guy that carried it. And, uh, and thank you so much, Jill, for the support on that. And Kim over in the house helping me organize over there and making sure we kept the votes where they need to be. And, um, and I'm just thinking that's going to be one of the greatest additions to Helena and the whole state. Yeah. Yeah. The museum is going to, every one of our little small towns with museums over time, you just watch them uplift. They're going to get better. It's going to start with baby fixing roofs and HVACs and security systems, but sooner or later yeah. they're start, they're going to, everything's just going to, you know, brighten up and shine up. And then, of course, with the new historical society building that they're going to build on the south, or excuse me, on the north parking lot, if that's where it's going to be. There is in coordinated language in House Bill 5 that Brad, um, you know, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm Brad Hamlet put in there for coordinated language that they have to discuss the mall location. Oh. It has to be discussed. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. But there's still a slight chance that that could possibly happen if they can pencil it out. I don't think it's going to happen. But, but that discussion will happen. So with that being said, we're really excited for how we can uh, better display Montana's art, um, all the things that we have. And I, there was nothing more satisfying to me, of course, it's everybody, it was a definitely a bipartisan support, the Solutions Caucus with all the Democrats working together on this, because okay, there was a lot of people seriously wanting to kill that bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it was embarrassing. They pulled all kinds of shenanigans to try to kill yeah. that thing. And I was tried very... Tried to tie it to other bills that we yeah. knew weren't going to pass. I mean, yeah. Amendments. Bad. Everything was designed yeah. to kill it. And that's unfortunate because it was good for Montana. And it's good for the economy, good for tourism. And it's going to make us money in time. It really will. So, But the, the final thing that I really enjoyed most is when we passed the bill and I saw... Uh, Bruce Wittenberg, and he just like he won the Super Bowl. Ah! <laughs> to me, that was it's uh, been a long suffering <laughs> journey me, for him. Yeah. That yeah. was time to get that ring. And everybody that works with him as well, you know, he, yeah. he's always at he's the spearhead. But all those people at that tiny little agency, you got to breathe a sigh of relief for everybody there. But of course, it's not just about Helena. That's been the message all along. It's really. You know, it's the heritage of the state. It has to be somewhere, and the capital city is, is the place that makes sense. So, congratulations. Well, I'm yeah. just speaking now as a, as a citizen of yeah. the state, not just of well, Helena. It it's wasn't so just me. relieving to know, okay, that one has been dealt with. Mm -hmm. And, and it got support across the aisle. Same yeah. with the Romney to. Hall and all this. We took some things that have been on there for a long time, and we rewarded the, you know, um, President Crusado. For her great job, doing a great job running that university, and to me, I thought it was a reward for good, good job done. You know, I mean, for running a great campus and finally getting the Romney Hall done it was good to get it off the plate and move on. Yeah. But again, my if you had there's many highlighted there. I, uh, the thing that made me the happiest of the whole session was watching Bruce Wittenberg go like yeah, <laughs> and then of course, then I I, I truly did. Uh, Julie took a lot of heat on the floor. Yeah. It takes a lot to stand up with your own party just trying to torpedo you and beat you up, and, yeah. and thank you for your courage to doing that. <laughs> it's not simple because they were, the comments were getting pretty rude and uh, uncalled for. And um, But so thank what? you for staying strong and mm -hmm. did a good job, and everybody supported her. And uh, mm -hmm. that's where I am. I, I'm very pleased with the museum passing and my trails bill. That's where I'm at. Great. Well, last but not least, Marianne well, Dunwell. Well, you know, so many good successes uh, to applaud. Um, I, I want to give a shout out to our minority leader, um, our, I'm sorry, our minority whip, Kim Abbott. Uh, you, her, she is, her skills at negotiating are so astute, and you got, you saved Medicaid expansion for one in 10 Montanans, hmm. um, as did Mary Caffaro. 
if if Mary's uh, 425 was that HB 425 if, mm -hmm. if without her bill we wouldn't have been able to negotiate even what we got and that was really to save health care for one in ten Montanans not to mention the hundreds of thousands of jobs and, and boost to the economy and and uh, all of the money generated for the healthcare industry and beyond so I, I think I think it was a really good thing if anything uh, that we got done that was um, quite a benefit I, I I do have some issues with how we got to where we got to this time one of the reasons I decided to run for office was Back in 2013, I was just an advocate for Medicaid expansion. Mm -hmm. It failed, and I, and I was standing in line to testify, and the gentleman in front of me who was bearing his soul about his health condition and not having health insurance was shut down by somebody on the committee, who I believe it was the chair, who had heard enough. And, and I thought, that's very rude. This is the people's house. I think the people's house needs some repairs. Uh, uh, frankly, I, I, I witnessed that. Um, same kind of behavior to the public trying to weigh in. And the members of the public are here today, and I'm so glad, and I hope they do, they are able They've to They've issued engage. me a pink slip, so we're going to get to that <laughs> good, soon. Good, good, good. Because um, you remember the deep freeze of this winter. People traveled treacherous roads, even when law enforcement was saying don't travel. And they, they were limited to a minute, maybe, or just say your name. Yeah. And that's because we, we're not increasing our session time, our, but our numbers of bills have multiplied. We, there were in excess of 3,300 bills drafted this session, in excess of 1,100 bills introduced, more than 270,000 floor votes taken mm. in 87 legislative days. And that's not a calendar day necessarily. Um, I, there were a couple of days, calendar days, that were made to legislative days because yeah. we had to follow the rules. Well, to me, it's skirting the rules. You're supposed to wait a day, a legislative day, between second and third reading. Towards the end, that was all scrunched in. So um, it, it, I, I just think we need to look at the process that is the same process as we had at statehood. So, so uh, I, I, I just wanted to say that I, I would like to encourage our colleagues to, to take a look at how we're getting there. We're getting really good places. We're, we got an $80 million infrastructure bonding bill. Yeah, I'm glad you raised we're, that. I'm going to be able to fix tonight. up Montana, put <clears throat> Montanans to work with good public works projects in addition to the Heritage Center. Um, you know, I, I came from a bill signing today. I had, had the honor of co-sponsoring a bill that stops the clock on statute of limitations for criminal prosecution of child sex abuse. Um, the, 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 it was my bill, uh, House Bill 109, that was folded into a, a bigger bill that dealt with civil law as well. We were able to reduce statute of limitations for civil prosecution, not quite enough, but there's next session. Uh, and it, it was, it, it was, you know, there should no, there should be no clock on justice when it comes to child sex abuse. When it comes to anything, but when it comes to, to child sex abuse, that's just not okay. Uh, I also uh, co-sponsored and was instrumental in getting across the finish line uh, peer support, uh, uh, mobile crisis units for mental health response. Um, we, we. Came close, but didn't quite make um, suic more suicide prevention, especially for youth. And 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 and, and I I don't think that's okay because we're number one in suicide and we're not getting any better. Um, I did have a couple of bills uh, co-sponsored by some Republicans, members of the Solutions Caucus. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we're going to be coming up with a solution in the interim to try to get that across the finish line. We, you know, we tried to put some sideboards around um, gun violence. Mm -hmm. And 
just today in Denver, there was a, another school shooting, yeah. eight students injured. I, I, it just seems like we have, I was just thinking, I was driving here and thinking, we have, we have a school shooting every week, it seems. Um, so uh, I did get a couple of bills, few bills passed, um, clean up, clean up bills that really, but, but kind of make, make uh, it, it easier for um, administrators to conduct government in a more effective manner. So, you yeah. know, you know um, the, the, the other thing, uh, thank goodness for our news media. I want to give them a shout out too. Uh, they, they keep us uh, on our toes, they keep us honest, um, they keep us accountable. And uh, also something to work on during the interim is who gets a press pass. In the fast-paced um, uh, uh, environment at the session, uh, a mistake was made, and somebody who's not a journalist, a blogger, uh, a, a right-leaning blogger, uh, frankly with ties to hate, hate groups, huh. got a press pass. And, and so I just it's time to step back and say, yeah, we're making progress. Let's look at how we're making progress. Towards the end, we were all we were all sitting in free conference committees, making sure they didn't stuff some really bad things into some really good bills. Yeah. And so we were pretty much um, playing defense uh, a lot of the times, not not just at the end, but throughout the whole session. So um, I, I don't mean to be the spoiler. No, at but this I'm, table. actually, I'm glad you I, brought up. I, a lot of these process issues and one of my questions which we may not get to was well okay we you all have something to celebrate actually lots of things to celebrate together and across party lines but there's always unfinished business and you've addressed a, a slew of items that are really unfinished business including the perennial questions about the process itself the timing of the session whether it's long enough or or not and I think um, we're all witness to the pain of the clock imposing limits on public testimony. I think that's the most obvious flaw, if we can call it that. I don't know if it's a flaw. It's just a reality when people are cut short. It's a flaw. It's the people's Yeah, we we'll call it a flaw, and, and maybe it's reparable, and maybe it's not. I, I, I'm not the one to say that. Yeah, that's for you to, to work on. We've been joined by yet another representative, Mafi Funk. Thanks for <laughs> My coming. Apologies. No problem. Your your timing is impeccable because it's your we're turn. Answering questions? Well, no. we're no. we are actually going to address some questions that are written for us oh. uh, uh, by our studio audience. But before we do that, it's your chance to say what you're most proud of, the the one item that you want to claim, not as your own necessarily, okay. but the thing you're most happy okay. about. Yeah. Uh, having been accomplished in this session, having passed pretty much no bills, there's nothing that <laughs> I can. Put. And 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 any bills you pass, it's always it's always a collaborative effort. And so, I guess the thing that uh, uh, inspired me the most and kept me going the most was working with the, our Helena youth um, here. They were just mm. tremendous. They they wanted to write this bill. They didn't think they could get it out of House Judiciary. It got out of House Judiciary. Then it got off the House floor. I mean, they were so um, fascinated and empowered. And my goodness, their testimony, I think everyone um, up there from the people in the committees to th which they presented, the people in the halls, everybody, if only all people who testified could be as articulate as these young people were. They were extraordinary, one after the other, and they just worked so hard, and they ate up the process. They, they, it was, they never thought that something wasn't right or wasn't fair. And, and, and in, in, in speaking on um, a, a testimony, it, it is frustrating when people have traveled a distance or when they feel passionate that they can't just talk on and on. But there are, the, the reality is there are time limits. And I think certainly in the committees I was in, there was a great deal of uh, recognition that some bills were going to have a lot of people. And if they would often say um, how many proponents and how yeah. many opponents and say they wouldn't give 
equal amount if there were unequal number. In the when the when the students presented in the house, Mary Ann very graciously, because he gave 20 minutes and the room was packed with these young people, um, and Mary Ann had a bill afterwards and she said, "You can take my time," <laughs> and so he let them. Well, he, I knew it wasn't going to pass anyway. So <laughs> <I was wondering. laughs> Sometimes you do know, don't you? Yeah. Well, remind when us you're a was, Democrat and there's a Republican right. majority. Just yeah. remind us about the substance of the bill. Well, it, the originally the one that they wrote, it had. Had, um, we have in statute to uh, to teach gun safety um, in our schools, but it is pretty. It's not used. It's not used. It's it's. I'm sorry to the person who wrote it, who is very unhappy with me that we <laughs> referred to it as needing a little tweaking, needing a little updating, but it is like 20 years old, 27 years old. So it needed some updating. So they just wanted to have slightly stronger language um, and to enable OPI to have on its website uh, uh, resources for schools that wanted so that then the school boards because it's such a, a, a hot topic now school boards don't want to touch it yeah. they don't want to go anywhere near it and so this would just give some resources the students could then go to the school board and say here are resources help help keep keep this conversation alive so it's not something we just don't talk about we can so that was the part of it and then the second part um, was uh, child uh, access prevention laws, which meant that, and this was they there was there were almost no um, been almost impossible to be prosecuted under this law. But it was just to help parents. We considered the parental education part, where it's just parents maybe don't leave your your guns and ammunition where somebody you might teach your kid everything and they might be the most responsible person but they have a goofy friend that comes in sometime and and that's when accidents happen so it was just to help people think twice about leaving leaving I mean you could have a gun in your bedside table absolutely but when you get up and leave for the day don't leave that loaded gun yeah. in the bedside table which yeah. most people don't but this was just to, just Again, they just wanted to keep the conversation alive. Well, th thanks for telling us about that particular bill and the support mm -hmm. it had from the get-go from these young people. I, it I'm, was a their bill. I'm a witness to what you're speaking to about how articulate, how articulate. articulate. <laughs> I can't even say the word. Uh, you know, these people they they take me by surprise. They're they're so inspiring. They're high school students and, and who, middle school students even. Yeah, who I just know. seem to know how to say things, when to say things, and how to get the point across. And I'm, I'm always just taken aback, like, whoa, I'm not as worried about the future as I no, they, they usually help me am. Yeah. They because help me they keep that. coming and, to the and, fore. And Senator Gautier was one of the first to, that they spoke with way back in the fall. I mean, they spoke with, to get his advice, what, how can we do this that it might pass? Yeah. I mean, because they just wanted to. And they were in the hallways until the very end. Oh, they my They God. worked so hard tried until, that the last yeah, yeah. until the what? very end. Was the day before? What, one, one vote. One yeah. vote. Oh. Mm -hmm. day before, I think. Yeah. yeah. We, we thought we had education. them. Yeah. 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 It was really cool. I was a little, you know, I did write them some notes of to be excused from classes. Because <laughs> I think it was getting a little bad. <laughs> You know you're on TV, be, right? Yeah. They should have got. Yes, I'm sure. No, the, the, their teachers, because it was usually AP government that they were missing, so they figured oh, they were learning. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, thanks for all that. Uh, we're going to move to the, the questions from the audience. We want to get to them so that we, we don't uh, um, give them short shrift. And then before we're done, when we'll, we're approaching that in short order. I just want to go around the table and find out which what each of you is planning to do during the interim because the public needs to be reminded that yeah you went through mm -hmm. this incredible intense 90 day session or almost 90 days but your work doesn't stop you you know it continues so we'll address that before we're done but I haven't read these so I'm reading them <laughs> for the first time but here's question one number one and everybody can just kind of pipe in as you will in what ways were you able to work together to pass legislation important to the Helena area? Now, to a large extent, you've kind of addressed that, but mm -hmm. let's, let's just add that dimension about working with Helena in mind. 
Go so ahead. I, well, and I'd like to say, I mean, we talked about the museum bill, but I think mm -hmm. that that is like a perfect example of all of us working on something for a very long period of yeah. time. And, you know, the Helena delegation has always been 100% behind that, but they've always said in the legislature it's all about Helena. Well, we tried this time to really work that out and to make sure that it wasn't all about Helena, that it was about Montana and it was about the smaller communities. So the hard work that we did in the interim was really to find that middle ground. And so with the grant program that is going to, and it actually makes the building of, our, of the museum here in Helena take a longer period of time, but it puts $2.5 million on the ground every year out in the state of Montana in grants to smaller museums all over. Because we know that, you know, Montana and Helena can be the the place where people want to come for the museum, but they're going to stop along the way at all those smaller museums and in those smaller communities. And if we can make them stop for a moment and yeah. stay and look at one of those smaller museums, those communities are, yeah. you know, get that economic mm -hmm. benefit over time. And so we, that was like our concerted effort um, to get to this point because, you know, the Helena mm -hmm. delegation has always been behind that 100%. It was really about how do we. To, to bridge that gap and to get people to realize it's really about Montana. And we always knew that, but yeah. how do we get that message out and how do we put that out? Um, and to do that in order to put them into the bill and to go ahead with that $2.5 million in grants that, that they can all take advantage of will improve those buildings, improve those communities, and increase their economic benefit in those local communities, which is great. Yeah, so. I, you know, I, I just want to speak to that. We've had direct experience making a tour of rural museums a couple of years ago with support from the Historical Society. And what we learned by doing that was, you know, uh, unforgettable. Mm -hmm. They are really treasures. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, you ultimately get funneled back to the big place. But, boy, it's time well spent, those small mm -hmm. rural museums. And any amount of improvement is just yeah. uh, frosting on that mm -hmm. already built it, cake. It, it is, and um, Bruce Wittenberg may be a little bit shocked, but I, went, I hadn't bought 100% into the museum bill. And two weeks before the end of the session, I was at the York Community Association meeting with Senator Sales, and we were talking about the, the museum bill, and I was telling all the benefits of it. And the gentleman that runs the little log cabin museum up in York, Montana, he said, and we can apply for grants, right? And I said, yes, you can. And he was so excited. And that's what sold me on it yeah. because they have a hard time. They can't have a bake sale to repair their yeah. roof. They can't raise the money that's needed to make the improvements or upgrade their system so that they can get some of these beautiful works of art from Helena mm -hmm. to go to all the four, you know, far corners of Montana. So that's what really sold me on it was Dave from York was so excited he could apply for a grant and and you know improve his little museum and like and I was down in uh, Townsend for the the chamber meeting and they were excited about it too so mm -hmm. it's it it offers a lot of people options yeah. and, and the realization that the museum in Mont in Helena really is taking a lot of that history from around we need to send it back. Mm -hmm. right. And right. they have to have the facilities and the security to right. be able right. to house it when exactly. it comes back to them. Because a lot of those small communities, we are housing mm -hmm. their stuff here. If mm -hmm. we can get it back to their communities so people stop and, and see, we're gonna improve it so much. That we've so. Got, we have enough here to, to furnish quite a few smaller right. museums right. around <laughs> the state. And yes. that would be so great. great. It yeah. really would. Well, exciting. I hope that, it, addresses the question sufficiently for the for our audience members we'll move on to the next one uh, again I'm just reading this for the first time it seemed that health care uh, for almost 90,000 Montanans Medicaid expansion should have priority instead it seemed to be a bargaining chip for other interests how do you feel about the outcome I think we've already spoken to that at, at some length but why don't let's talk a little bit about that process of bargaining to support and kill bills. It's a Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's unfortunately, it's part of the process. And it really is. I mean, even up to the last minute, the museum bill was held as a bargaining chip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, it's just the, the makeup of the policy. That's not how I roll. I, I don't play that game. That's, that's for people that really enjoy the chess game of playing with the bills and, and moving agendas. 
But uh, I think overall in the end game of this thing, I think we all did pretty good. Medicaid expansion came out the way I thought it should come out. I thought it was a good bill. The museum, we passed almost everything out of there this session that I think everybody should be very pleased with. So it's part of the politics at the end of the game. But we had some very good chess players, people that know how to play the game, and they played it well, and they didn't sacrifice any bills that I know of. Yeah. Other and, than yeah. and the stuff that was paramount and important passed. Yeah. That's what we needed to have happen. And I think at the end, you know, as you get to the end, there are only so many things that people can hold up um, for leverage on things that they really care about. And I think every legislator has things that are the most important to them. And I think that's what we saw in the Senate was um, some people trying to grab on to see if they could revive things that were important to them. But right. at the end of the day, like, I wasn't ever super worried because I knew, you know, so, like, I'll just use... Um, I'll just use Jeff Wellborn as an example. I'm like, Jeff Wellborn is not walking out of this building leaving 96,000 people without yeah. health care. Like, it it's not easy. happening, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like, whatever's happening, like, that guy <laughs> um, is going to is gonna come through on that if he's the vote, you know? And and so, like, I was just holding on to, like, the people I knew over there, you know, and, and the relationships I had. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think at the end it gets it gets scary and it gets stressful for sure. Well, this is what I always try to tell people. Your bills can't be your baby. You know, yeah. If your bill is your baby, then you are susceptible to being played with. So <laughs> that's always that's my true. deal exactly. is your bill yeah. can't be your baby. Yeah. But yeah. you can work as hard as you possibly Good can. Mm -hmm. And being in this process for as long as I've been in this process, the other thing you learn is you may not get it done this session. You might not get it done right. next session. Yeah. But as you work on it and you develop the relationships and you educate other legislators, you bring pe people have experiences. They go, oh, I get that. Now I understand why it's important and now I'm on board. And you just keep doing that until things get passed. And, and if you happens. love your baby, you give it away. <laughs> exactly. You give it away to somebody, to a Republican who has a much better chance. Um, You're that, welcome, Terry. That, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but we had a mutual I, agreement. I, yes, we I'm did. Just saying, I, I'm just saying, when the Democrats are in the majority next time, it'll be the same way. And we'll, we'll work very well together on each mm -hmm. other's bills. So uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's just what is. And, and mm -hmm. so, you know, there were, I, I, it, it was uh, quite a learning opportunity for a uh, student from Carroll College who worked a few hours a week uh, as an intern. She got college credit. And uh, she had a bill idea, so I introduced it, we researched it, and then we discovered there was another bill carried by uh, Representative Logie, who's a, a, a Republican member of the Solutions Caucus. Mm -hmm. And so we, we met, we got together, and I said, let's have you carry it. I explained it to Faith. She, I said, Faith, you, what do you want? Do you want it to pass? Or do you want me to pass it? She said, well, I want it to pass. I want you to pass it, but I want it to pass. So we, we want it to pass. So let's work together. And you know, two, three, four heads are better than one. It's not a solo sport. So right. um, if you want your baby to grow up and, and Improve people's lives, then then sometimes you do have to give it away. And one. Yeah. 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 But it has to be one that they take. Because we tried very hard to get a Republican to carry the student's bill, but didn't quite. Didn't quite <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was next session. Well, I think next I think yeah. you've They'll successfully uh, answered a question at the bottom of the page. Why do you feel there was more cooperation across the aisle this session? It sounds like you're you're answering that as you talk about. The Solutions Caucus, I mean, that didn't exist before, I mean, formally. And I know it's an informal grouping, but still, you, you know, you start off talking this was an odd session in that, in that way, that there was this kind of weird pattern of cooperation uh, between... Well, you I mean, identify values, and, and we shared values. That, that's what it came down to. We found a way to move those values forward in the form of public policy. So, um, and... Uh, that's that's what happened at the beginning of the session. Um, it 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 wasn't so cooperative. The beginning was, uh, you know, you stay on your side of the aisle and, and I'll stay on my side of the aisle. And bills were killed. And and uh, but as you moved forward in this session, uh, you 
you set, you identify the, the the policy that that needs to pass, like Medicaid expansion, and work work together on that. So, um, yeah, everything's not roses, but. I do want to have, do, be brutally honest with everyone. This was an interesting one because a lot of those really important policy issues um, had to be done. We all knew they had to be done. And there's a lot of Republicans that are running for statewide office. Because, uh -huh. So that played into the ne necessity for some of these policy items to actually make it through because a lot of them needed them to pass as much as we needed them to pass. Right. So I think that that played into mm -hmm. some of the things that happened this session in, mm -hmm. in a good way because mm -hmm. I think it really helped mm -hmm. to kind of elevate things for them. They couldn't be seen as the one who did it. You know what yeah. I mean? So, so political ambition can have yes. positive consequences. Yes. Uh, oh, people yeah. tend yeah. to think, well, think ill it, of yeah. two too, too ambitious people, and, and but in it the, has a result. For, for, for some of the people, and I think in the Senate as well, but in, in the House, they might not have started out thinking, I mean, did, did you know that you were going to be part of the Solutions Caucus when you first ran? Of course, it didn't, didn't ex quite exist then, but you know, you, you talk to people, you start finding out um, people that you can trust and that you can rely on. And I mean, there, there were some s surprises. One of was the chair of one of the co-chairs of the uh, uh, Appropriations Committee, and not to, I don't want to give another podcast to me, but, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, John Adams. Yeah. Um, and he, I don't know if anybody here has listened to his final podcast with uh, Lou Jones and Nancy Balance. I did. That was, Fascinating. That was really good. Really fabulous. I recommend it to, yeah, mm. it's, it's, it's so because she talks, yours. Yeah, she <laughs> talks very frankly about how, who she was in 2011 or 2013, her first session and who she is she, now. What she emerged, matured yeah. into. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Well, and it really, no, but, she, but it really is, learning yes, experience. and it's we about figuring that out that you can want. trust people and who yeah. you can trust and who is honest with you and who works with you and who, it's, it's, a, it's a good process for that. Yeah. It, it is, and I, we all change. I felt like I was yeah. kind of a, you know, a naive freshman, I'm a Republican, there are Democrats, we got to stay on our own side of the room, and then after all, it's like, this is ridiculous, let's just all be friends, we all have a common goal. Um, we're just going to work in different ways to get it together, and, and I think that's that was the beauty of it. Is I really learned that there is an art to it all, mm -hmm. and it's about who you know, and and you have to have really smart people that have been doing a lot of research all over the country to figure out different solutions. Let's bring this in and see if it'll work in Montana, and. You know, you hear that a lot with bills. Well, this is what Idaho does, or this is what Ohio does, and and we'll we'll try it out for two years, and if it doesn't work, then it'll go away. But yeah. um, or we make it Montana. Yeah, yeah. you can tweak it. Every, everything can get tweaked. You know, the <laughs> collaboration did have some consequences, though. I mean, it, it, there was some retaliation, for example, against Nancy Balance by the the ultra conservative far right leaders, leadership. 38 special the, uh, group? Uh, yeah, <laughs> right? Um, I, I'm, uh, uh, Representative Balance, after session and interim and session and interim, uh, the chairing finance committees, appropriations, uh, was left out of the interim finance committee. But so I that uh, yeah. freshman, well, she's back on. I, I think the but retaliation will happen in any session, though. Yeah. It doesn't matter yeah. mm -hmm. whether it was this this session or, you know. Well, and the, I think the ones in the future. It's going to happen. But I just mean you, retaliation for working together. There's something yeah. wrong with that picture. But I think mm. I think what what Julie said is 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 really good too. Is that you want to, even if you never vote or rarely vote the same way, you want to. To, to build relationships because you don't want people to vote against your bill just because you're the one who's carrying it. Exactly. And I think, I, and that happens on both sides of the aisle. We get cross with people and say, well, I don't like that bill, but it's, and so you have, we have to be very mm -hmm. careful that we don't allow that to happen. And if you build those relationships, then 
it, it's not going to happen. You're going right. to vote for the bill and not the person who's carrying. And so my thing about that is to get back to our interim, which you were going to talk oh, about, yeah. Yeah. and the fact that the interim is nonpartisan. It is equal numbers of people in in the committees but working so together, close it wasn't gonna be. and so that's what I wanted to get at. Our interim is nonpartisan for a reason. We have these interim committees that we work on, and we work together. We develop relationships. We we talk to each other during the interim, and what we do is learn about policy and we have study resolutions that we work on during the interim which is super important for us because that's how freshmen learn that's how we all learn about new things that are coming and sweeping the nation on the last day of the session the very last thing that happened in the senate and what was going on in the house was an attempt by the leadership in the house and the senate to actually change the rules to make our interims to be partisan yeah and that would, to me, would destroy the system that we have built, which is this relationship building. Because partisanship during the interim essentially means that we continue this horrible, stressful situation that we have during the session for four months, and we're going to do it for the two years leading up to and the And by session, nonpartisan, equal, there are equal right. numbers right. of Republicans. They're balanced right. equally. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, um, I'm skipping a couple of questions that had to do with the historical society and a thank you for for carrying those bills but the members of the audience who who are not being fairly treated can speak to me and you after the fact because we've run out of time so I apologize to them but I think you you've addressed most of what's on this page we we only have like a minute left so just quickly what are you going to be what's your uh, prime function during the interim what which committee are, are, is most important to you what are you going to be doing then we'll just do so a quick round robin. i do tax committee during the interim which is kind of my passion tax policy in the state of montana is something i've done in all the sessions leading up and then i'm on water policy which okay. is also a huge passion for me water in the state of montana is an important topic and um it's whiskey's for drinking and water's for fighting yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know it's fun to tell other people that you know from other states that that's what we do here exactly and they fight over water all over the west as <laughs> know. of course go ahead so um I, I heard it was hard for freshmen to get on interim committees but i did um, manage to get appointed to the land advisory board so nice. will, yeah i don't know anything about it but i'm excited to learn is that a new interim committee it's under the executive branch so oh, okay. i don't know a lot about it and i haven't been able to find out much about it yeah. Learning. Well, learning. 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 Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, for you all, it's um, for the majority in the house, it can be hard to find spots for people, for sure. For us, it's um, easy. <laughs> you just have more members, you know what yeah. I mean? So and definitely. since it's balanced, yeah. It's nice. um, I am on two administrative um, committees, legislative audit um, with, uh, with Terry, um, and then uh, legislative council which sort of, you know, does a little bit of what Marianne was referencing earlier, sort of looking at the legislature um, and things that we, you know, could or should change um, and, and really spending some time thinking about that in the interim. Yeah, great. Well, I'm on state audit and I tried to get on energy, but I didn't get it. <laughs> I am passionate about the energy side of the business, but uh, um, state audit. And if you want to learn a lot about what's going on in, the, in the, all the different agencies in Montana, just attend the state audit. Because we get to see that we go into the weeds of everything. They, though, we do. they are strangely interesting, those <laughs> yes. So I've learned a ton from it. It's not really my personally my cup of tea, but um, uh, but I find it very interesting, and I'm looking forward to continuing my work. And I'll be working on the interim on another trails bill. <laughs> Can you go guess? <laughs> yeah. We need all the trails we can get. Yeah, you can be thinking about it while you're yeah, on the Yeah. So I'm looking forward to serving on the local government interim committee and an administrative committee, uh, legislative consumer council. I'm sorry, legislative, yes, consumer yeah. council. Yeah. Um, I wanted to get on tax interim. Mm -hmm. I've served on house tax committee for three sessions now. And uh, I'm excited during the interim, the tax committee and hopefully the local government committee will will be pulled into this to study uh, Montana's tax system. It needs updating, yeah, both on the state level. Um, I think income. there's a consensus on that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, because you know, just a quick take home. You know, all of the tax cuts we made for certain entities uh, on the state level. 
I, well, I can't say all, but many of them fall on the shoulders of locally, local property taxpayers, mm -hmm. homeowners, small business, property owners. Uh, and we just, they can't shoulder the burden anymore. Our property taxes are just ballooning. And so I think we need to get a handle on, yeah, the, we're keep a lid on our taxation during this session, but you know, who suffers? It's like a waterbed, like a seesaw. Something gives, and it's usually the local uh, communities. Um, so. I, I do look forward to addressing that during the local government interim. Yeah, uh, so there's a nexus between local government and the tax. <laughs> it's all system. connected. Yeah. The public revenues are all connected to be able to fund our important uh, services uh, for both on the state, and local levels. Okay. Education. <laughs> I'm on into the third time. Well, surprise, so. surprise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. I'm sorry we've run out of time. I want to, I, I know I'm not just speaking for myself to congratulate you all uh, f for all the fine work you did, the hard work you did, and that it's going to continue. So, you know, I can say a lot of us are proud of our Helena area delegation for Thank all the you. right reasons. That's very nice. Thank and uh, thanks for making time, you know, as you're exhausted, you, I know you've been exhausted and now you're, re you're refreshed and going on about your normal lives hard-working lives, but your work for the, for the people of Montana continues through the interim, and that's, I think we'll make that the last word. Watch and listen to these folks as they continue their work, and we'll look forward maybe to the next session and, and redoing this, this series. I think uh, people like it. So thanks for watching. Come back often. <laughs>